Last video for today is really just talking about how to combine the previous two things uh, to make our lives a little bit easier. So this is a type def for a struct. This is a very common technique, so the most of the time that we use struct, we're probably gonna wanna do this. So here's the same example we were just looking at with the room in Hopper Hall. And what we notice is that if I wanna create variables of this type, um, I have to use this whole thing, struct room because this whole thing is the name of this type. So if I just put room here, I'm gonna get a compiler error that um, it says, I don't know what type this is and it even tells us we have to put the word struct there. Well, this is kind of annoying. It's annoying to have to write struct all the time. Maybe there's some good reasons for it, but um, we can get around this with our type def. So remember how type def works is we say the um, old type name first, so like struct room, and then our new type name like that. So now I can put room type here and I don't have to type struct. And now everything just works because room type now is just an alias for struct room. And in fact, you can do that even simpler. So what's annoying here is I kind of had to come up with a name for the struct, which is room, and then I have to come up with a different name for the type def. Um, I can actually just avoid giving this a name in the first place. So I'll take out the name right here and I'll make this whole type declaration a type def. Um, and this is maybe hinting why we want the semicolon at the end of a, type de of a struct type definition normally. So now what this is doing is making the struct and making a type def at the same time. So I don't actually give the type a name. I can't refer to this as struct room anymore because I took that part out, but I can refer to the whole thing just as room type without the struct part. So if I compile this, it works. Um, and again, so I probably don't even need to say room type here. I can just say room now. So now I don't have to use the struct keyword every time I refer to this one. So notice the difference is that in this case, because I'm doing a type def and a struct at the same time, I say type def, then I have the word struct, then I have the uh, curly braces with everything in between, and then after that, I have the name that I wanna to assign to it and a semicolon. It has to go in that order um, in order to work the way we want it to. And then we can just use that. We've now made a new type called room, which is this struct. And this is now more similar to what you would see in other programming languages like Java. So um, in my experience of C programs, people do this quite a bit because you don't feel like writing struct all the time.